Nope. 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 It's no secret, I like a good quilt. <laughs> What's going on guys? Uh, as you can see, I own a ton of quilts. Matter of fact, I, I think we should see how many quilts I actually own because I did not count them. So uh, I, I piled them up on the floor here. One, two, three, Costco quilt, that counts. Four, five, six, seven, eight top quilts. Oh, and, and a sleeping bag. I also own uh, this is literally the only backpacking sleeping bag that I own. So those are just the top quilts. I mean, I've got under quilts as well. Enlightened equipment, outdoor vitals, UGQ, hammock gear. So I got a good idea of what a quilt is and uh, from all the major companies that are out there, even a Costco quilt I've got sitting down here. And then the sleeping bag that I've got, which you guys have seen in other videos, is the z Packs sleeping bag. Okay, so my goal today is hopefully to give you guys like a definitive answer on should you be buying a quilt or should you be buying a sleeping bag? I know what you're thinking. Right away you're going, Dan, you've got eight top quilts and one sleeping bag. We already know what you wanna buy, so obviously that's what we should buy, right? And that's totally not true. So super fast, let me just tell you the difference between a, a quilt and a sleeping bag. Really, a quilt, all it is is a minimalist sleeping bag. It's as if you took your sleeping bag and you, uh, you know, zipped it up and you cut out the back portion of it. So there's literally no back to it. It's almost like a big blanket. And a lot of quilts nowadays have a foot box that can either be sewn into a foot box or it can be zipped up into a foot box. Now you're gonna search online and you're gonna go on YouTube and you're gonna find out that a lot of backpacking channels are gonna tell you that the quilt is definitely the way to go. And I think there's definitely good reasons for that. But man, the more I think about it and the more I uh, understand what new backpackers are getting themselves into and just being able to get good sleep when you're in your tent or in your hammock, I think there's a real argument for purchasing a sleeping bag over a quilt. So like the bottom line for most people of why they choose a quilt over a sleeping bag is that a quilt is lighter. It's gonna have less insulation, less materials overall, so it's gonna weigh less, and therefore your hike is what people consider to be the most important part of just getting out to camp and being able to maybe carry other items that you couldn't carry before because you cut weight out of your sleep system because you had a quilt instead of a sleeping bag. Now I will admit that a quilt, you can actually control the temperature better. So um, at night you can just kind of lift up the end like you would a blanket and stick a leg out or whatever if it's too warm or if it's really cold, you can you know wrap it up underneath and around you. So there's definitely ways to regulate temperature better I think in a quilt. So if you can regulate the temperature in your sleeping uh, quilt, I almost said sleeping bag, <laughs> then why on earth would you wanna buy a sleeping bag if it's gonna weigh heavier? I mean, what's the point in that? I, like most of you guys, grew up camping uh, with a sleeping bag. And uh, as a kid, you had a sleeping bag. And you got in your car camping situation with a sleeping bag. Nobody bought a quilt when they were car camping, when they were growing up. However, when I bought a quilt, um, I paid a lot of money for it. I got into tent camping uh, back country tents camping and started to bring my kids with me. And then I discovered that the quilt that I bought wasn't wide enough for what I was doing in a tent and it was actually getting really uncomfortable on the colder nights. So I ended up buying another quilt. And then I realized that my kids also needed uh, quilts to sleep in, so I started buying even more quilts. So especially if you're like the brand new backpacker, I mean, you're to the point where you think you wanna get into hammock camping and you've tried it and it's been okay, but uh, you think you might still like a tent and you have many reasons for that as well and there's debates on that issue and then you're kind of wondering about your whole sleep system and your big worry is sleep. Like if you have an issue sleeping at night, just regular camping, I'm gonna tell you, you're likely gonna have an issue if you buy a quilt for several reasons. One is in order to do it correctly, you gotta spend more than one night in that quilt. Usually it's several nights before you actually figure out how to use it. One of the biggest things that people don't talk about is that you've gotta use pad straps 
with a quilt. Now pad straps are typically like some sort of a shock cord or an elastic band that wraps around your sleep pad and it has little buckles or it has toggles on each side of it and those would match up with buckles or toggles on the side of the quilt and what that's gonna do is it's gonna make that quilt wrap around to the side of the sleep pad so that way it stays in place so that when you roll around you know the quilt isn't gonna come up on one side and open up a little bit of an area where maybe draft could come in and people will tell you that if you use pad straps that it's gonna eliminate draft altogether. Well, that's not true at all. As a matter of fact, those elastic cords and those elastic buckles will stretch as you're moving over. So even if you've got a small sliver, a, just a tiny sliver of gap between that side of the quilt and the pad, draft is going to get in there and you will feel it throughout the night. You may not feel it right away, but over time, maybe after a half hour or hour, you're gonna to start to get cold and it's gonna wake you up. The other thing that people don't tell you, you're not gonna have that hood any longer. And for a lot of people, I understand, it's not that big of a deal. For me, it's not a big deal. I usually wear a jacket that's got a hood on it or I'll wear some type of a beanie or a, a buff or something like that in order to you know, compensate for not having a hood. But a lot of people enjoy that hood and they'll miss it. Now there's one company out there that I know of that's doing an innovative job in making sure that the sides of a quilt don't lift up to let that draft in, and that's UGQ. UGQ has done a great job of adding what they call their dynamic tension. And really all it is is a piece of shock cord that goes the length of the quilt on either side of the quilt and you can pull on it so that way it kind of bunches up and pulls that quilt underneath you similar to a sleeping bag and helps wrap it up even more. You're not going to have loose sides of the quilt along the pad and it's going to help alleviate that draft from coming in. Now it's not going to stop it completely because you could still roll over and stretch and still have gaps, but it definitely makes a huge difference compared to the other quilts that I've used. Now going over to a sleeping bag, you don't have to worry about drafts. I mean that thing wraps up around you. It's what you've known your whole life even as a kid from sleeping in a sleeping bag. And also you can use a sleeping bag similar to a quilt. When a sleeping bag is open and it's laying across you, it's gonna be super wide and you're really gonna have a lot less concern with drafts coming in along the sides of it. Now if you're a hammock camper, okay, I'll just tell you right out the gate that you're gonna be fine with a quilt. Uh, the way a hammock is built, it comes up around you, you don't have drafts coming in to the sides and most quilts are built for hammocks. So if you're a hammock guy, I would just say go for the quilt that's what you're looking for, just get it right away. But if you're the guy like me who really enjoys sleeping in a tent and a hammock, or you know maybe you're just sold on the tent idea and you really wanna do the tent thing and you're worried about weight and all that kind of stuff, I would tell you there are options out there for really lightweight sleeping bags that you probably should just consider those instead because the last thing you wanna do is get out in the back country, have a miserable night's sleep, and then you never go backpacking again. All right, so bottom line is this. I do prefer a quilt. However, if you are new, you want to set it and forget it, you don't want to think about it, or even if you've been camping and backpacking for a long time, but you've never really been able to dial in that quilt, or it just drives you nuts having to put pad straps on all the time, I would tell you, you're probably going to be just as well off getting a lightweight sleeping bag, and you're really not going to notice too much of a difference in the weight, and you can always compensate that somewhere else because your sleep is so much more important than what people uh, think. All right, guys, that's it. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe for more. Hit the bell notification so I can send you a video every time it's released, and I will see you on the next one.